Welcome. Good afternoon. Happy Monday. Hey, happy Black History. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Key and Kai Exchange. Hey, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Welcome. We're going to let some people give a chance for some people to come in. And then we'll get started. Don't forget to share. Share, share, share. Hi, Trey. It's been a long time. Hey. Long, long time. I've been watching your work. And you are pretty dope, sir. Hey, what's going on? Welcome, welcome to the Key and Kai Exchange. I wonder why it's not showing. Not sure. What's going on? We got a few minutes. We're just letting some people come in. Giving a chance for other people to come on in and join. And we will get started. Hey, how are y'all doing on this Monday, the 21st, I believe it is. Yep. Welcome. Happy Monday. Catch up. Hey. Hi. Uh, how you doing? <laughs> Welcome all. Good afternoon. It's the Key and Kai Exchange. We got some things to talk about. We gonna wait just a few more seconds. Y'all share a video. Yes, please share. If you have not done so already, please go to the Key and Kai Exchange on YouTube and catch up. What's up, Fat? Hey. Um, catch up on the videos if you have missed. We've had some great topics so far. Um, some interesting topics, some heartfelt topics, great conversation pieces. Um, so go catch up on YouTube, the Key and Kai Exchange. Uh, don't just go watch. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And um, yeah, hit that notification bell so you will be notified when there's a new video uploaded, as this one will be later on this evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see y'all dipping in and dipping out, that's cool. Just make sure you go back and watch on YouTube. Please and thank you kindly, ma'am and sir. Good afternoon and welcome. All right, it is 5.05 p.m. on Monday, February 21st, 2022. Tomorrow is Tuesday. 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 Tomorrow is a very unique day. I am going to try. I have tried to catch those two straight across. I wish I played the numbers, child, because I sure would play it tomorrow. Tomorrow is a unique day. It is going to be 02, 02, 2022, and I'm going to try to catch 2, 22 no, no, no. p.m. 2, 02, 22 22. Oh, correct. 0 2 2022 at 2 22. I'm going to try to catch it. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Tuesday. 
With that being said, again, welcome to the Key and Kite Exchange. We are going to have a conversation. Um, hello and welcome. Hey. Um, we are going to have a conversation this evening. As always, we are going to do a disclaimer and house rules. And that is, uh, there is no judgment on this platform. Um, we, we don't have room to judge, first of all. And we don't want to judge anybody else for their opinion, questions, or comments. We don't allow any negative criticism or any negative comments. We are streaming live from Facebook and Instagram. And so we will be um, kind of going back and forth. Um, and hopefully we can get enough uh, subscribers to allow everybody to come together on one platform and that is our ultimate goal is for everybody to join together on one platform that's why we're doing two because we have two different um groups of people um on instagram and facebook uh people some people on facebook are not on instagram some people on instagram are not on facebook so what we're trying to do is bring everybody together the ultimate goal is to have everybody together on YouTube. Tay, hey. welcome, baby. Good afternoon. Um, so that is what our ultimate goal is, to have everybody to join together on YouTube at the Key and Kai Exchange. But we have to get our subscribers up so that we can go live and continue to stream uh, without the, the subscribers. Um, the algorithm is not picking up. And so we will continue to go live from these platforms, Facebook and Instagram, until our subscribers get up there and we can hold a live. Hey. Um, so, yes, uh, that is what we are doing. Again, it is uh, Black History Month. What's up? What's up, mother? Hey. <laughs> um so yes that is the ultimate goal is to get everybody combined on facebook instagram wherever you are watching from one of these platforms to get to youtube so we can all be one and we are not jumping back and forth um so again if you have not gone over to the key and kai exchange on youtube please do so subscribe layer subscribe share like and comment please um we want to get that algorithm going so we can bring you all together and um have a larger group um, i just think we're better together so that is what we are trying to do so tonight or this evening if you will we are going to talk about things that are not discussed in the black community say it properly Things that are not, well, that was it. Discussed, talked about in the black black community. Things that should be talked about. Things that the black community should be more open to discussing. Yeah, for sure. Um, so things that are not discussed or talked about, all kind of issues in the black community. Um, and if you are... I don't know how to, oh, okay. Let me do this real quick. And I'm reaching, please forgive me. <sighs> um, Just push brakes. Oh. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And then hold it. Pin. There you go. It is pinned in the comments, the Key and Kai Exchange. Let me feel. Yay! Honestly. Thanks, Princess. Yes, absolutely. Okay, we are going to uh pin this on Instagram. But anyway, um, no need to repent for princess please don't start girl you gonna have me hollering on this live i sure need it too i need a good gut buster 
So you right on time. <laughs> you right on time. But um, some things that we don't, um, a lot of things we don't talk about in a black community. Let's start with mental illness. Um, thank you. If you are just joining, welcome yes. to the Key and Kai Exchange. Um, and tonight we're talking about things that are not discussed, talked about um, a lot in the black community. Um, and I, so the first thing I said was mental illness is one of those things that uh, we struggle with. Um, yeah, mental health for sure, or mental illness, mental health period altogether. We do not discuss it a lot. We will sweep things under the rug. We will ignore things skip past things, act like it's not a thing. Uh, we're embarrassed by it. Um, there is a lot of stigma. And we really, I mean, because there are so many more issues that are prevalent in today's society, we really need to bring awareness to mental health awareness because it is in fact a thing. Yeah, It is something that we shy away from yes we are a strong resilient people but there are issues and things that go on in our community and we just don't discuss it we don't talk about it it's our family family business um is to stay in the family and we still have that mindset um, hey hi jules um Yes. yes, we've needed slavery since therapy. Absolutely, we Francis. Therapy I agree. Since slavery. I said we've needed therapy since slavery. I didn't. No, he said slavery since therapy. <laughs> <laughs> we we needed slavery. <laughs> yeah, my mind. See, mental health. I, but I'm not afraid <laughs> to talk about my issue, huh? Okay. Um, but anyway, yes, we have needed therapy since slavery. That is very true because there are so many things that we sweep under the rug and we do not talk about openly. And I wanted to say, because I did think about this, um, I remember um, I worked at a certain place and there was a child, um, thank you. Thanks. Um, there was a child and the parents were in denial about this child being autistic and it was made to seem like um she just doesn't like certain food she just doesn't like to talk to the other kids she just she's a loner and i'm like mm, i kept telling um these other individuals i said no this baby is autistic uh, there were certain characteristics, but the parents were in denial. They didn't want to talk about it because not my child, right. you know, not something is wrong. I said, no, there needs to be a conversation had this, this, there needs to be a serious conversation because, um, she needs to be properly diagnosed. And then you all need to know how to, with her interacting with other children, you all need to know what makes her tick the things that um her sensory um all of that type of thing you all need to know these type of things and educate yourselves Thanks. so you know that it's not that she just doesn't like this food her palate is sensitive to certain things so there was only a few things that she would eat you know, after a while of course um they finally had her diagnosed and sure enough she was on a high spectrum for autism and for me, it made it easy for me to deal with the child because I, I mean, I'm the first day I met and saw her, I said, yeah, she's autistic. And um, I've had other conversations with other parents, um, you know, about their children being on the spectrum of autism. But that is just one of the things, um, you know, we tend to say, and I'm just speaking about children, but we tend to say that, oh, they just so bad. Mm -hmm. They just so active. They just won't. But there is something other than that. Now, sometimes you do get those kids that are just bad. 
They need their behinds <laughs> whooped. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. That's all it takes is a little pow pow. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm a firm believer. If you know, you know. Um, welcome to the Keela Academy. <laughs> um, oh, oh. oh, go ahead. I want to speak on. Um, oh, Princess, as a culture in the past, especially where religion is involved, uh, we've been taught that everything is a spirit and it can only be handled by prayer and whoopings. Uh, come on and talk to the people. Learn us some things, exactly. And we are definitely going to tap into that as well. Um, but go ahead, Kai. I wanted to, um, what, as far as um, mental health, I wanted to tap into um, dealing with like depression and all of that, especially in at, as a teenager, like, um, I'm not going to say I didn't know what depression was, but I had never experienced it to, like, put my finger on what was going on with me as, um, at a certain point in my life as a teenager. So, um, I was dealing with, dealing with, like, depression, and I couldn't figure out, like, why I was so down, why I was so sad. It was a point in time where I wouldn't even come out of my room. Like I would be in my room 24 seven. Um, like I didn't even want to get out the bed unless I had to like use the bathroom or if I ate something. Um, but I couldn't figure out like what was going on with me. Um, so I think it was it wasn't until I got a little bit older when I realized, oh, I was going through depression and I wasn't really vocal about it because I wasn't aware of what was going on with me or what was going on with in my mind or the stuff that I was battling like. So it was just something that I don't know, it was just, it was just always something that I couldn't put my finger on. I just I don't know. I just let the, the days go by. I was sad. I was in my room. And then it had got gotten to a point where I was so depressed, like, or I was in my room for so long that I didn't even want to see the walls in my room. So I would sleep on a couch or, and even then I couldn't pinpoint exactly what was going on with me. But I think uh, if depression and mental health was a big conversation, um, I would have been more aware and maybe I would have known how to handle what, what I was going through as a teen, um, in that point in my life. So I think that's another thing that, um, we should talk about and it should be an open discussion in a black community, uh, depression because it's real. And sometimes like, like, uh, princess said, like, it's not always, oh, well just pray about it. Like, sometimes you need real help. Sometimes you need to sit down and talk to somebody and get advice and get guidance on what to do when you're dealing with depression and other, you know, mental mental health issues. So, yeah, um, I just wanted to tap in on, like, depression and stuff like that because that's something that I went through. Um, I, and I also want to um, speak on that. Hey. Um, Hey, sister, um, you're not late. You're right on time. Uh, welcome to the Key and Kai Exchange. If you are just joining, uh, we are talking about things that are not discussed or talked about um, so much in the black community. Princess said, unfortunately, our children deal with depression because we as parents deal with the same thing. And when it goes unchecked, you definitely can pass the pattern or behavior right, right to your children. So you just opened the gate to exactly what I was about to say. And I could not, I just thought that, um, hey, Tommy, welcome to the Key and Kai Exchange. Hey. Um, <clears throat> but the reason I couldn't identify with what she was going through at the time and we have been through so many things so yeah. many um things mentally because i was dealing with um some issues myself some 
um, esteem issues, some some depression issues, and all this type of thing. And we were literally just functioning in this function. And, um, you know, communication issues. We've had all of those issues, and it has not been easy. And still working through those things today, we are, oh my gosh, I, I cannot say that we are 100% better at working through things and working through issues, but thank God, first of all, we don't look like what we've been through, it's a and blessing. thank God that we are in the place that we are in today because we struggle so much. And uh, Princess, you, I'm telling you, you hit the nail on the head when you said because we as parents are going through things and we cannot um identify them because we are in our own darkness and so you know i can't i couldn't then um see past my own mess my own uh baggage to help my child and to know that she struggled and there's conversations that we've had where we've talked about things or she's going through things i'm i'm talking about some uh serious life things that has happened and I completely missed it. I didn't see it, but that's because I was blinded and uh, consumed with my own um, issues. And again, these are things that, you know, we don't just sometimes, and I want to make this clear, not everybody, because I wasn't hiding the fact that I was down. I wasn't hiding the fact that I was struggling. It just came out in different ways. Why? Because I didn't know how to handle it myself. So me trying to figure out why I feel the way I feel and um, I can't be helped to her, my daughter, if if I couldn't help myself. Delilah, welcome to the Key and Kai Exchange. Hi. Um, but I couldn't help her because I couldn't help myself. I couldn't see past my own situation to help her so we definitely want to um open up that communication and then i i admonish everybody and i've talked about it before about therapy um i've had some situations with therapy and i'm not against um i'm not against therapy at all but um there were just some things that i was able to um, go through. Hi. Hey, Shalanda. I was able to go through and um, it just came naturally. And of course, I mean, I may still need some therapy, um, but I just hadn't sought out. You know, when I was younger, I've seen a couple therapists and I've had, you know, a therapist who um, completely, completely violated the code of conduct. And, um, really uh what do i want to say they broke the code of confidentiality i'll say that and um so it it has been a strain relationship with me and therapists although um my sister and my mom are therapists <laughs> Um, another sidebar too with uh, parents like if you notice signs of depression or just notice a change in your kids, a change in behavior, or just the way that they function. Um, I know like when I was going through depression, uh, I didn't want to clean up. Like I went through a phase where, and at this time, um, I was with uh, my grandmother and she would always be like, well, it was me and my, my cousin who stayed with my grandmother at the time. And my granny would always say, they so lazy and trifling and she won't clean up their room and da 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 And again, I didn't understand what was going on with me, but I was depressed. I was like super depressed to the point where I wasn't cleaning my room or it was times where I would wake up and I didn't, I mean, being honest, I didn't even feel like showering because I was so depressed. And, um... But my granny, she would always, like, be on me or, like, I wouldn't even say talk down because, of course, all parents or 
you know, they want you to be clean and stuff like that. But I think versus looking at it as, oh, she's just being lazy and trifling and m maybe, you that know, more too. yeah, it, it was, it's deeper than, than that. And at the time it was deeper than that. Um, like I said, I was really depressed at the time. So like I said earlier, now that I'm older and I can pinpoint what was going on with me, I'm like, oh, that's, that's why I was like that. Or that's why I did what I did. Um, so yeah, like parents, if you notice a change or a difference in your children, talk to them about it. And if it doesn't seem like, you know, they're being open, open about, um, what's going on. Maybe look into therapy yeah. um, because I know a lot of the times stuff will be going on again. I wouldn't know what was going on. I wasn't sure exactly what was going on or it would be times where I just didn't want to talk or I didn't want to talk to certain people. So, you know, definitely look into therapy um, for your kids for sure. And then love on them. And, and right after I say what I'm going to say, uh, we're going to talk about the religious um, aspect of the whole thing. Um, make sure you love on your children because we also have a tendency to, like she said, you know, um, you know, you want to say, well, they're just this way or they're just that way or they're just being this or that. And they really could be struggling. And especially as um, a teen, preteen, and in this day and age, the, um, the children, the young people have so much pressure on them, way much. And I used to say all the time, I know there's a few people that can attest to this, but I used to say there is no such thing as peer pressure. I mean, you do what you want to do. You make your own choices. In, but I, I kind of go back on that. Because there is so many things, there is so much temptation, and yes, you do make your own choices and decisions and ultimately decide what you're going to do, but make sure, like Kai said, you know, if you think there's something wrong, maybe seek out therapy or make, but my thing is, again, make sure you are loving on your children, yeah. make sure you are engaging with them if they don't want to talk to you or be bothered or you know something like that still make time or just sit with them or well what do you want to do um you know and just try to figure it out because eventually like i said there was so many things that was going on with kai that i completely missed because of my own the the things that i was going through because because i was blinded and carrying my own weight and I missed a lot of things. And so I, again, it is no excuse, but now that we have grown and we've learned and we've had a chance to talk about these things, you know, there are some things that I learned about myself and, you know, some things that I learned that I could have done better as a parent. And even with that, with Kyra now being an adult, and being able to come back and say, I had to go back to that time and say, you know what? I apologize. You know, I was not the best parent, not excusing anything, but because I was going through this myself. I was hurt myself. So I couldn't see through my stuff to help you out. Um, ooh, ooh. Sorry, y'all. Um... But as far as religion, <laughs> I said spirit, spirituality, oh, one thing that the black community, oh, you want to read that real quick? Okay. Yeah. Before Kyra gets into that. Welcome. Welcome to the King and Kai Exchange. If you are just joining, uh, welcome. Hi. We are talking about things that are not discussed or talked about in the black community. Monica said it is very important to have an open dialogue with your children as well as love. They should have the opportunity to be able to express themselves. Absolutely. Um, oh, Princess, you own one. She said religion needs therapy. I'm going to let you go ahead and say what you got to say. 
uh, I was saying with religion, one thing that the black community should talk about is being spiritual versus religion and denomination. Uh-oh. Uh oh. That's all. <laughs> okay. So religion needs therapy too. Oh, oh, me, me, pick me. Listen, that is a whole different life, but we gonna get into that too, because, honey, things have changed, honey. Yes. Um, I agree. There are all, oh, there are so many things that needs to be talked about when it relates to the church itself. And I'm not talking about, you know, some things are said, but then there's a lot of things that are still not said. There's a lot of things that are still not talked about. There are things that are not dealt with. Um, I had a conversation with my mom about why is it that so many things, and this, is, this wasn't really uh, specific to what I was saying, but why is it that things in the church in a religious setting is swept under the rug. What are we what are we hiding? What are we trying to cover up? And this has been passed down from generation to generation. I mean, of course things are different now, but when you go back to the elder women and men, I'm talking about women were you know, and again, this is a different time, but women were getting their behinds whooped. They was, you know, they had black eyes. They were forced to abort children. Um, they were being abused and, and cheated on and all this type of stuff. And all they were offered was prayer. Let me pray for you. Pat you on your back and send you back home to get your tail beat or to get cussed out or to get talked down to. Why? Why? I, I, I mean, you know, I, I just, I want to know why are so many things not discussed in the church? Why don't we have, I mean, we, we've had support groups and things like that. Um, but I, that is huge. Princess says some of the abuse that people suffer, especially the African African American culture, um, starts within the world of religion, not spirituality. Spirituality is more about the relationship between people and God. Religion is about the practices. I agree. I was talking to my mom about that, um, mm -hmm. about this specific topic. Um, I was telling her, like, growing up, I feel like I was, I learned how to do church. Hey, Shane. Hi. Um, I learned how to do church, if that makes sense. Like, it wasn't, I, I, I don't think that the spiritual part of church was really given to me i think it was the religious the religious part of it am i saying that mm -hmm. right the religious part um the de denomination now that's that's huge right there because a lot of the stuff that i did growing up in church was based off denomination it had nothing to do re with religion it had nothing to do with spirituality it had nothing to do with spirituality spirituality it had nothing to do with well, yeah, I wouldn't say yeah. nothing to do with religion, but spirituality. spirituality. It had nothing to do with spirituality. It was more so like denomination and, yeah. and with a little sprinkle of religion in there, if that makes sense. Uh, just a sprinkle. 
Yeah. So that's one thing that um that I was saying about uh the whole religion and spirituality thing. Uh growing up, yeah, I was I I was taught how to play church. Not saying I was playing in church, but learn behavior. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people did. I mean, growing up, that's what a lot of people was doing was playing in church. Still. As soon as the music start, they shouting. Yeah. High five and Oh, honey, listen. Y'all princess, Kai. Y'all start y'all tap <laughs> dancing on some toes. Hi Debbie. Um welcome to the Key and Kai Exchange. Hi. Um Oh my goodness, the the learned behavior, and um, man, it is. I'm telling you, that that is huge, and we're talking about things that are not talked about. But y'all, listen, it is so many things in the church, and guess what? If you talk about it, it, it came to my mind. You're gonna be rebuked. Because you is you're speaking against the church. Right. You damn to hell if you talk about these things. Because how dare you speak against the church? And it's not, it is what has been taught again the learned behavior. But we don't talk about these things. We don't we don't we don't want to address these things. And that is why we have these people that are showing their behinds in the church because things are not talked about it's not said because things are covered up and it's so uh oh cool debbie i'll have to inbox you after um my live i miss you too but because things are not talked about um in the church setting um okay princess um you gotta hit me Yes. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, you want us to call you on here? Oh, you want to join the live? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, so, um, okay, we got you. Yes, hey, my hey. hey y'all. Oh, look, y'all done tapped hey. on the nerve. Huh? Y'all done, done tapped on the nerve with this whole oh, church yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, I just, I, I'm on here because I want to share my, my, my experience. Okay, um, for sure. Number one, with depression. Okay. Uh, I grew up in a strict uh, religious home. Mm -hmm. We was, every Tuesday, Every Friday, all day Sunday mm -hmm. was church for me. That's how I grew up. Well, I suffered some trauma as a kid. You know, that's pretty much, it's sad, but that's everybody's uh, story now, uh, being abused, sexually abused or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was molested growing up, but I never got therapy for it. I just went on with life, okay? So as years go on, I go through other things. Well, what happened in 2014, I got in a car accident. Because of that car accident, it triggered uh, PTSD and some okay. other things and so i went into a deep depression i didn't know i knew something was going on but i wasn't 100 percent sure and i watched yeah. myself go down to the point when you were talking kai i could relate so much i wasn't cleaning i didn't want to clean my body i didn't want to mm -hmm. do anything i legit would just lay in the bed yep when it was time to go get my daughter from school i would go pick her up come back home lay in the bed so I was like, okay, I battled with the whole, I was raised this way in the church. You don't go, your pastor is your therapist. That's how I was taught. Right, right, or right. Or you, you go, you seek godly counsel from someone in the church. Mm -hmm. That's how I was taught. However, I will say this, the church doesn't necessarily 
create an environment or atmosphere to make you comfortable to reach out to people because they don't express or they don't share their experiences. So sometimes right. you feel like you on an island all by yourself, mm -hmm. not knowing you may be sitting in a pew right next to a person who's experienced the same thing. But because like right. you were saying earlier, no one opens their mouth, no one's mm -hmm. communicates. Mm -hmm. So you don't know that this person been there, done that. So anyway, I sought out a therapist. I was like, I need help. I'm in a dark hole. I need help because I knew that if I didn't get the help, I knew it was going to be bad. So I, yeah. I, 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 I got rid of my religion, how I was brought up. And I mm -hmm. sought out the help that I knew I needed. And I looked at it like this and I felt like God gives therapists the knowledge and things like that to be able to help us with yeah. certain things. Your pastor doesn't know everything. I'm not yes. discrediting, don't get me wrong. I'm yeah, not discrediting absolutely. anyone's leader. And if you got people who are going to go to their grave, going to their pastors, seeking counsel. Yes. But the truth of the matter is your pastor doesn't know everything. He right. has not experienced everything. Right. And sometimes you got to go outside of that. And I, I will say this, the church is where I got my foundation. Mm -hmm. I don't take away from that. Absolutely. However, when you look at a natural house, sometimes there's some work that has to be done on the foundation of your house. Right. That don't mean you got a bad house. Yeah. That don't mean you need to throw the house up for sale. But sometimes the base of that house needs a little work. Yes. And so that's the same thing. It's equivalent to what I learned growing up. I had to get rid of some of that stuff that was at my base because it was causing problems. I had mo it was some molding going on down in my basement. Yeah. There was some, yeah. some things. And so in order to stop the mold and the leaks and all that stuff in my bait, I had to get rid of some things and I had to unlearn some things. Is it easy? Absolutely not. I'm 46 right. years old. You got, I was conceived, born, raised in the grand old. Y'all know the rest. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to tell you too, it's devastating when you put all your faith and trust oh in an organization gosh, yes. and my as you God. grow you begin to see it's not all the unicorns and rainbows that you yeah, thought it was. Yeah. Now, when, you're, when you're, 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 your parents and things, they can keep a lot of things hidden from you when you're younger. Mm -hmm. But when you start to develop spirituality and relationship mm -hmm. on yeah. your own, yeah. you begin to see, saying what y'all said it was, this is something yeah. different. Yeah. And that's devastating in itself. Yeah. Because you depended on it and trusted in it for so long, and then boom, you like, are you you what? You mean yeah. to tell me? You know, and so again, but I will say this too: God has His way of letting you know He's still there with you, mm -hmm. outside of your practices and your mm -hmm. the way you grew up. Because when I when I shifted, I ended up, I went from the grand old to missionary Baptist because I was okay. my husband. That's where he ministers at. That's where he plays. He, he's a musician. So I okay. went with him to support my husband, which it was a culture shock for me because yeah. I'm used to the hand clapping, tongue talking, rolling yeah, in the yeah. floor and all of that. So I go over here and it, it, I didn't even go for a gospel. I went traditional Baptist. Yeah. They, it's slow over here. They sang slow. Yes. Like, what is this? Ah. But when it first happened, I was like, I ain't going to make it. But I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you what happened. In the process, God allowed me to be put in a place where everything slowed down so that I could hear and so that I can heal. Because when you think about it, a lot of times growing up, the way we grew up, a lot of folks go to church all the time. They be broken, hurting, beat up, yeah. and everything. The yeah. music starts, they shout, and they walk yeah. out the door the same way. Yeah. They don't understand nothing the preacher said because he mm -hmm. hollering, hooping, and carrying on, and they leave in the same way. Whereas when I went to the, to the traditional Baptist church I went to, like I said, it was much slower. So mm -hmm. I could hear clearer and I could heal. That was the place, that was the station God took me to, to heal from that certain trauma. Okay. And so, and sometimes God will put you somewhere that's way different than what you used to mm -hmm. in yeah. order for the healing to take place. 
Yes. But that, I just had I to come agree. in and chime in on that, y'all. That was good. I appreciate it. That was so good. We definitely, we are definitely going to have to talk about because, like you said, you grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. Same kind of experience. We are really going to have to talk about that because I had a similar experience where when I realized for myself, I literally died in the church. My, Not on spirit, the yep. my spirit was completely dead in it. And somebody told me, you are dead. You need to, you need, to, if something has to change because you are just going with the flow Sunday after Sunday. And I was literally sitting there like stone. And then for me to, for Kyra, Kyra would literally be in tears like, I hate it here. I don't understand what's going on. I don't even like, what is the message? What do we even, and then the same type of thing, the music started everybody up and it's, and it was, it's, it's way more. Yeah. We gonna have to, right. anyway, <laughs> we gonna, we gonna definitely have to um, get back on this, but I appreciate you for thank you uh, tuning in and giving for sure. your for sure, uh -huh. and I love you guys, and I enjoy you so much. Love you too. Love you too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, babies. Bye, bye. Okay. Yes, that was, that was great. great. Um, sorry, Instagram, y'all miss everything. This is why I'm saying. This is why I keep telling y'all. Y'all gotta subscribe. Get people to subscribe to uh, YouTube so we can all come together and be on one platform so we can just really talk and kick it because hey. cousin, what's up, Breezy? Um, but yes, yeah, so we can all be together and um, just have one conversation because it's so difficult. Like, I felt so bad because the people on Instagram can't, um, they can't get in on a conversation on Facebook. And that's where most of the people are. Uh, what's going on, baby? But yes, um, that is religion is a big part of things. Y'all need to do a key and kai zone too. Ooh, we oh, should. Great, great idea. idea. Um, yeah, we will uh, try to figure that out, Francis. But yes, just I mean, if we don't do nothing with that Zoom, but have like some people in there and we just really chop it up because i see you know that's why that's why we have this platform so we can open it up because we don't know who is going through what has been through what and can help somebody yeah. else and that is why i wanted to do this because you know this is, and this was a, a great topic um i didn't know people in church went through so much absolutely I, I mean, it, it, people in church are human, right? I mean, that's just like school. That's just like work. Mm -hmm. Everybody is human. Church is not without flaw. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the pastor has flaws, but, you know, you shouldn't put all your faith in man anyway. Yeah. All your faith should be in God. So, yes, the church has issues, and they are without fault. They are not without fault um, for sure. But um, that's where you get your covering. Yeah, let um, us be. Let us be so we don't go to jail. Right. That part. Because um, I'm going to tell you. Now, that's a different testimony. I'm Muslim. And maybe. All right. And you should have added more context because, yeah, that kind of left me. Hanging. I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there is so many things that, uh, you know, what else do you oh, say? So yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Let's tap into that, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm now I'm looking at high notes. Y'all know I usually have notes. I didn't have notes, but um, sexual violation. Well, now you hear more about it, but that's another thing that has not been talked about um, a whole lot in our community, um, period. Like, it, it has been made, not only is it 
have the victim been told, you know, keep it quiet, but it's something we just don't discuss. You know, we don't um, teach our children. And um, even though, and sometimes I guess we can say on the flip side, because I definitely, even when Kai was small and I talked to her in a way, you know, sometimes we don't know what to say to our children. But just like I was teaching Kyra when she was younger, people don't touch your private areas or your bathing suit area, you know, and then speaking to her and letting her know that it's okay to say breast and vagina and behind instead of these other names that bring shame because one thing about it, and I've never understood, even with my guy kids, um, you know, when they talk to me, all of that other stuff, oh, all of that other stuff, those other names and all of that type of stuff, what are you, what are you talking about? And then if you go somewhere, you go to a hospital or a doctor, and you have all of these names for your private area. My cuckoo. Yeah. Like, what? Your head. What are you talking about? Yeah. My <laughs> my cookie and all this type of thing. Like, and they don't, or vagina is such a bad word. Like, that is the craziest thing to me. Hi. Hey. So, yes. Um, can, I, uh, can I make a little? Yeah, sure. So, she was just saying she talked to me. Um, <laughs> she talked to me about, um, like, people don't. People are not supposed to touch your, you know, private area or your bathing suit area. But as a child, I think you should, you have, you really have to like specify and make things clear. Like, because, I mean, I, okay, I'll say I was sexually violated by a family member. And the way that it was done, it was made to seem like a game. Or like, you know, oh, this is, we cousins, like, or we family, so this is what we do. So at the time, like, I knew that outsiders or strangers wasn't supposed to do it, but being the only child, being a kid, and just not really being aware that I mean, not only strangers, but family yeah, too. Yeah. And you know, even if it's presented as a game or something like that, it's still being sexually violated and it's, you know, it's not right. So I think that, again, I'm always saying like parents and stuff like that, but parents, when you are talking to your children, children about uh, sexual violation, you know, let it be clear that it, it not only happens with strangers, but it can happen in your family, in your yeah. house. Um, you know, you know anybody could sexually violate you. So yeah, that's another thing that, I and that's add. that's the one thing that I will say that is covered up a lot, or try, uh, or people try to cover it that because they try to cover for the other family member. They try to protect the other family member. And what you don't want to happen is that the person that is doing the violating, it's not so much that, here you go. That's why I have this here. I'm trying to quietly stand with a piece of mail. <laughs> it's not that, um, you know, we want something terrible to happen to the person that is uh, violating or that type of thing, but they need help. And especially, you know, and I won't say especially, but young or old, they need help so that they are not doing this to other family right. or other, you know, other children in the family. And that's what we have to protect. That's what we have to, and we have to speak up and talk about these things. It's okay. Listen, y'all, it's okay. If something is happening, it needs to be understood that these things are happening and it needs to be talked about so it does not keep happening. Shalanda said, absolutely, and it's happening within families the most. I definitely agree, and it's being hidden. 
Um, Prince, Prince said, unfortunately, people have become so desensitized to sexual misconduct because it's so common. Teach oh. your children to keep telling until they feel safe. Yeah. Yes. Monica said, I feel the individual should be exposed so that each individual can heal. Absolutely. All of those things are very true. And I agree, you know, you have to tell the children, teach the children to keep saying something until somebody believes them, whether they go to other family, whether they go to teachers or somewhere they feel safe, keep telling somebody. Um, and then um, I will say, you know, like I was saying, that I do feel like the person that's committing the violation like I was saying, they should be exposed so that you can deal with the issue and, and you know, get, get that person help, not hide behind, you know, you're trying to protect them because you don't want them to get in this trouble or you don't want, they need help so they don't hurt someone else. Um, oh, Lord, Shalanda. <laughs> Shalanda, they exposed them rascals. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, it is happening way too often. Um, I agree with Princess that it is common. And like Kyra said, you know, um, we, uh, most of the time, you know, we are, we're all, always telling the kids, you know, stranger danger is, is somebody outside, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, but we don't talk about what if it's a family member, mm -hmm. what if it's uncle? What if it's cousin? What if it's brother? What if it's sister? What if it's auntie? Mom, what dad. if it's mom, dad? We don't talk about those things because we um, we try to protect and we think those are, you know, we automatically think those people are going to protect us at all times. Uh, these family sec secrets, Monica said, are what causes the trauma. Yeah, I do agree. Um, and those things need to be talked about. And like I said, as far as the church, you know, these things happen with the elders and it's been passed down. The same thing with families as well. These things happen, you know, and they say hurt people, hurt people. And there are so many situations where that saying makes sense because hurt people, hurt people. If somebody has been abused or treated a certain way, um, as a child, then they do that to their children and they do that to their grandchildren. And then those people do that to their uh, children and grandchildren, nieces and nephews. And it just keeps happening. It's a vicious cycle. Um, Shalanda said, it's a lot to deal with, but that healing is very much needed until it's talked about. The individuals suffer, so we have to let it be known so it'll stop. Absolutely. And that's what I'm saying in essence is it needs to be discussed and talked about so that we can begin some healing so that we can get to the root of the problem. Even if it's something that's generational, it can be stopped dead in its tracks. And that's the thing, you know, we, over the years, we've heard about generational curses and all that type of thing that needs to be stopped. And it is running rampant. It is like a perversion is at an all time high. And yeah. there's things that are Absolutely. accepted on social media. There's things that are accepted in everyday life. And it should not be, we should not be okay with certain things. Certain things shouldn't be said. Children are already exposed to enough. And then to have them, you know, and I'm saying children, but you know, it just keeps going up, you know, um, Princess says sexual trauma has been happening since Bible days and it's still going on. Not okay. Absolutely. I agree. And that is, that's what I'm saying. Like it is perversion is at an all time high, you know, things happening and, um, you know, we don't talk about it or we just dismiss it. Like it's nothing and it is not okay. And it's, I mean, you know, we just, we, we definitely, we have to keep talking about it. We have to keep pressing the issue. We have to allow people the space to feel comfortable to talk about um, these issues and get this stuff out here. Uh, mental health awareness, you know, 
And this, this is with everything. If you see something, say something. If something doesn't seem right, feel right, look right, say something. You never know who you could be helping. Um, Instagram is about to end, and we are about to end shortly on Facebook. With that being said, for Instagram, until next time, peace out. Thank you all for joining the Key, the Key and Kai Exchange. Follow us on YouTube so we can all join and be one family. The Key and Kai Exchange. Love y'all. All right, Facebook. Yes. Um, yeah, we got to get to a point, um, y'all, where, where something is being said. We have to keep this platform going. You know, I'm not just asking y'all or begging y'all to subscribe to the Key and Kai Exchange on YouTube. I'm doing it so we can have this open platform. We're already, we're on here for an hour. Um, sometimes we go just a few seconds over, but we need this platform so we can start talking about these issues and these things that nobody is really talking about. We don't, we talk about everything else and, you know, this silly stuff and all of this type of thing. And I really wanted to get back. We may end up with this topic during a part two. Um, I mean, just talking about mental health period. Um, cause I just went through some things, um, and I needed a mental break because, um, uh, I mean, I just couldn't, that's why I didn't go live Friday because I just needed some time. Um, just so many things on my mind and uh i just overwhelmed you know so i just needed needed some time for me um but anyway yes we definitely need to get back into that uh princess we are definitely going to see about this zoom and um For sure, Shalanda. She said, she, oh, I'm yeah. so glad y'all started this. Yes, continue with the mental health umbrella, for sure. Um, you know, I I really I appreciate Princess. Thank you so much for coming on and uh, joining us and giving us your testimony, your story. We appreciate it so much. We love you dearly. Um, and just shedding some light on um, some serious issues. And that is why we are here. Again, I say it all the time. This is why we're here. This is why we have this open dialogue too. Fat, we love you too. Uh, Monica, thank you. Love y'all. Um, yeah, and we're going to wrap it right on up. But I just, again, I love you all. I appreciate you all for taking your time out and watching with us. And, um, just chopping it up with us. Uh, we'll, well, I will be back. Uh, Kyra won't be here Friday. It's just going to be me by myself. <laughs> just me. Y'all just get me. Y'all just get me. Hey. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to still kick it. And, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe we'll have a little fun. Maybe I, Maybe we'll do, you know, a little twerk session or something since Kai gonna be gone. We'll turn up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Got the cup. <laughs> Water in here. Yeah, it ain't nothing but a little. Hey, don't test my game. <laughs> you don't know. No, nah, this ain't nothing but a little watered down juice. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'll be ready for a Friday Night Live. And we're going to have to do something fun because I'm going to be by myself. So it's going to be a little different. Um, anyway, again, thank you all for joining. Oh, my gosh. My my supporters. No twerking. <laughs> Girl, I don't lost all this weight. No twerk. No, not yet. But um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no, we're going to, we'll just, you know, we'll make a, we'll have a light, lighter topic. Um, I appreciate y'all, my same supporters. I love y'all so much. Thank you to um, the new people that came on. Tommy, it was so good to see you. And who else came on? Debbie and Shane. Thank y'all so much for uh, tapping in. Um, I don't know what else to say. I guess that's it. That's mm -hmm. it. We don't win our hour. Um, 
make sure y'all if y'all have not princess thank you for subscribing to our youtube channel again uh we are trying to grow our youtube so that we can be on one platform between facebook and instagram we can all merge together and um yeah be on one platform so with that being said the key and kai exchange on youtube thank you all for joining like share and subscribe yes please share and subscribe and until friday i'll see y'all then wait friday 40 and over it's a party boy oh Fact. <laughs> get out of here i'm talking about 40 and over <laughs> yes okay and then you get this no everybody's welcome and it's a party how about that you're gonna say 40 and over anyway thank y'all so much i love y'all tonight love you guys. um i will see y'all again friday peace, peace out